How do we come to a reconciliation between faith and truth? And that is the inseparability of truth and love. In the Bible, the heart is the core of the human person, where all his or her different dimensions intersect, body and spirit, interiority and openness to the world and others, intellect, will, and affectivity. If the heart is capable of holding all of these dimensions together, it is because it is where we become open to truth and to love, where we let them touch us and deeply transform us. Faith transforms the whole person precisely to the extent that he or she becomes open to love. So in the truth, truth cannot operate without love. That we have the seemingly tension between the heart and the head that wants us to take us in two different directions. That you either have to be rational or you either have to just be blind and take a diving leap into faith. Uh, but in fact, the heart is that place where all of those come together. And that when we can reconcile the truths of our faith, that happens through love. So there is a relationship between love and truth. Only to the extent that love is grounded in truth can it endure over time. Can we truly say that we love somebody if we do not know who that person is? A husband and wife form a bond of love in their marriage. But that bond of love has to be established in truth. But they have to know who it is they're marrying. That they come and through their relationship to ever deeper knowledge of who this person is. And because of that, they are allowed and are able to love that person even more. So that this love and this truth go together. And if you separate them, then in fact you lose them both. If love needs truth, truth also needs love. Love and truth are inseparable. Without love, truth becomes cold, impersonal, and impressive. It's so easy to turn truth into a weapon, something that we can use against somebody else. That, you know, in the midst of an argument, I could have some little piece of knowledge, which in fact is true. But if I don't love the person, and I use that truth, that I know, I can in fact use that as a weapon. I can use that to destroy the person, to hurt, to deeply inflict, inflict them. But truth calls me to love that person. And love calls me to love, to communicate truth to them, so that they can't be inseparable. Because if we go to a complete rationalism, we get a cold and impersonal society, that everything has to have a practical purpose. If you go to the other extreme of an emotionalism, well then, just whatever makes me feel good, well then that's what I'm going to do. But in fact, there's a union between my reason and my affectivity. And that is found in, makes it union in the heart. One who loves realizes that love is an experience of truth. That it opens our eyes to reality in a new way, in union with the beloved. So in fact, if I encounter truth, that is my mind experiencing what love looks like. If my heart experiences love, to my heart, that is what truth looks like. And so they're both experiences of the same reality. And they both point me to the same reality. They both point me to the same transcendent living God, who is love, who is truth. And these are the ways that I can encounter them. And that with the eyes of faith that enables me to see that, I in fact then can see it even more clearly. And so from this, Pope Francis goes into faith as hearing and as seeing. So faith as hearing, that encounter, that openness to an encounter with the living God, that our faith comes from hearing. We hear a spoken word made to us. Hearing God's word is accompanied by the desire to see his face. So we hear that word, that promise of fidelity that he speaks to us in that encounter with him. And that inside of us fosters this desire to in fact see him. 
and that we want to go from that experience of hearing to the experience of seeing Him. And in fact, that desire drives us to then look for Him. Hearing emphasizes personal vocation and obedience and the fact that truth is revealed in time. That I can look back at my own experiences, my own journey of faith, and I can see, wow, well, here God entered into my life. I remember having this transcendent moment, this moment of God being personal, that He knows my name, that He loves me, and that He has called me. And that experience, on my part, requires a response and obedience, that I hear it, and then I respond to that word. And that lets me see how my own journey, my own experience of God, is a journey, is a journey of faith. The truth which faith discloses to us is a truth centered on an encounter with Christ, on the contemplation of His life and the awareness of His presence. So that experience of truth lets me know that Christ is in my reality. When I contemplate His life, when I hear the Word of God spoken to me through scriptures, when I encounter Him in the sacraments, in fact, I become more aware of the presence of Christ who is already present in my reality. That this isn't another step that comes along the way, but in fact He's already there and He comes to me. And then I can look for Him and expect Him to be in my in my. Uh, reality, that His presence is already there. And so in this dialogue between faith and reason, we have kind of the fruits that will come from that. Because our fanaticism, or rationalism, or relativism, is going to lead to one result. This apathy, this boredom. Because I've made myself the center of my reality, there's nothing for me to do. There's no nothing for me uh, to say. There's no one for me to talk to. And there's no one in whom I can love. And very quickly, our reality becomes boring. And it's, it's just a dying inside. And it's asking the question, why don't I kill myself? Because, in fact, there's nothing worth living for. It's not even that there's suffering that I'm enduring. It's just there's no meaning to reality. There's nothing to do. It's just at the end of the day nothing. And yet faith when united to reason will bring another response. This stimulates wonder. That when we look at reality and are constantly encountering the presence of the living God in our reality and drawn into a relationship of love with Him the only thing we can do is wonder at the world that is around us. By stimulating wonder before the profound mystery of creation, faith broadens the horizons of reason to shed greater light on the world which discloses itself in scientific investigations. Pope Francis is telling us here that if I approach everything I do with faith, then in fact I can see everything else that I do even more clearly. It goes from being black and white to color. It's a whole another dimension of reality that we can see. So something as mundane as math, as science, physics, as English, any of these sciences, whether it be an art or investigative or whatever, all of them then become an occasion which we get to wonder at the God who created this world. And it becomes an occasion where we encounter the God who created this world. And it completely transforms the very foundations of the reality that we encounter. And then from here, Pope Francis goes to the faith, faith and the search for God. What other reward can God give to those who seek Him, if not to let Himself be found? What other reward can God give to those who seek Him, if not to be found? This kind of goes back to what we were talking about with idolatry. But the opposite of faith is idolatry. It's not this, a type of questioning. Because an idolatry will lead to that boredom, to this apathy, to this 
non-movement, not going anywhere, not doing anything. And it's just, you stop. You stop growing, you stop thinking, you stop living. But yet faith will draw you into a journey. Just as the Magi are following a star, they see this light, and they follow where that light leads. We are called onto a journey. And that this light that we are given, this light of faith, it does not completely illuminate everything, but yet gives us a journey, a direction, a, a way to go. And on that journey comes the questions of faith, comes doubt, comes questions of, can this truly be real? Can God even love that much? What is truth? If we are authentic in asking those questions, then in fact we will be authentic in finding a real answer to those. And that, that is the natural response of faith. That we're not called to this, you know, oh, I got it all figured out. Oh, I can't ask a question because that's contrary to faith. In fact, authentically going into faith, using my reason to look at my faith, in fact, will lead me to asking those questions. And on the far side of those questions, in fact, is a deeper faith than what I had before I asked the question. I will, it will lead me to another encounter with God. And so He gives us the capacity for reason. He gives us the capacity to love. He gives us the capacity to experience truth and the desire to have it, to search for it. And what is other than that for Him to draw us to Himself? Not he doesn't give us the desire for truth and love to be at the end of the day frustrated and alone and tired and hungry, but in fact to fill us. And so from here, Pope Francis goes to faith and theology. And that clearly, theology is impossible without faith. Right faith orientates reason to open itself to the light which comes from God, so that reason, guided by love of the truth, can come to a deeper knowledge of God. This questioning is the entire field of theology. But you cannot even embark on that without faith. It's essential to the journey. And that while there might be professional theologians out there doing all kinds of studies, might have scripture scholars who claim to be atheists, in fact, it's a complete waste of time. Unless the asking of the question, the study, the work, of theology is not an effort of the life of faith. Because our faith is what's drawing us to ask these questions. Asking the question without having the desire to know the answer, to come up with some copacetic answer, in fact doesn't mean anything. And that is why doing theology without faith is clearly impossible. But when we have faith, it in fact opens us up to seeing things we might not have looked for. To seeing the presence of God at work in reality. To seeing new dimensions to things. New connections we never even would have even imagined. And yet, it is still encountering the God who has always been there. And so this is how uh, Pope Francis concludes chapter 2. And we will begin with chapter 3.